Hey guys, this is Colin with Alpine Electronics. Today we're gonna to be installing our PSS22 WRA weather resistant sound system that is a direct fit plug and play solution for 2011 to 2018 Jeep Wrangler JKU. Let's check it out. This kit is a complete sound system upgrade. It includes new speakers for front and rear, replaces every speaker in the vehicle. It includes a beefy 10 inch sub to drop onto the passenger seat, two new amplifiers to really give you a ton of juice, help overcome road and wind noise and make it play loud and clear, and plug and play harnesses that even incorporate factory style G plugs so there is no cutting or splicing involved with putting the system in. While this kit is a direct fit replacement for 2011 to 2018 Jeeps with the base sound system, we do wanna mention that it will work with premium sound vehicles as well. However, it does require additional steps that will likely require professional installation. Um, it also will work in 2007 to 2010 Jeeps with some adaptation to the amplifier mounting that also may require some professional install. Some tools and materials you'll need for this installation. Zip ties, we do include a pack of zip ties with the kit. You may want some additional just in case you, you need to cut any rearrange wires and, and put them your own way. I used a torch to melt our heat shrink. You can also use a heat gun in place of, uh, of our torch. A micro Phillips head. A small flat head for adjusting amp gains and uh, switches. A small pick tool for releasing some of your plugs. A set of cutters for cutting off the end of your zip ties some various panel tools for popping the panels out, a step bit or a 930 second drill bit for mounting your subwoofer volume knob if you choose to do so, Phillips bit, some various extensions and a ratchet, seven millimeter, eight millimeter sockets, a T15 socket, a T30 socket, a 10 millimeter and an 18 millimeter for the seat bolts. And I highly recommend having an impact gun especially for the amp bolts under the dash. And uh, seven millimeter on a gun definitely speeds things up as well. First step for every installation, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our negative terminal with our 10 millimeter socket. Our Wrangler today has an I-509 WRA-JK that we installed in a previous video. So we're gonna start by removing that if your vehicle has the factory radio, please follow along in the installation manual for steps on removing it. We can get started by popping our bezel off. Little trick, I like to push the power window switch out from behind, makes it a little easier to get to. And then I turn it to the side, just push this release clip, little red release clip, and out comes the switch. Then off comes our bezel and odd plugs. We'll set that out of the way. Next, we can remove four seven mil screws from the outside of the radio. Supporting the radio with my hand as I pull the last screw out. And a little trick I like to use, I'm just flip the radio upside down and the ears will allow it to sit directly on the dash, kind of keep the screen safe. Next, we'll remove our knee bolster panel. And just reach into the top, it just unclips, no tools involved. And set it aside. Then we can remove two seven mil screws. That are on the bottom of our cluster. cluster just pops out. We'll set that aside. First thing we're going to start with is our front speakers. We're going to start by installing our tweeters. One thing to note, these tweeters are drop-in fitment for the 2007 to 2014 Wranglers with the tombstone style mounts you see here. 2015 to 2018 incorporate a flat style tweeter mount that we include an adapter bracket to use. The crossovers included with the tweeters have two different plugs. One is used for 2007 to 2014. The other one is used for 2015 to 2018. Um, you would only use one or the other depending on the year of your vehicle. Also note, 
These tweeters have adjustable level, so you can choose how bright you want them to be. Um, it's a, kind of a little bit of personal preference there. If you want a brighter, more detailed sound, go ahead and use the plus three wire. If you want to have it a little bit more subdued and a little bit easier on the ears, use the zero dB wire. Go ahead and use our panel tool. Pop the tweeter out. You can use a small pick tool to release the clip and unplug our tweeter. Next, we can plug the 2007 to 2014 connection in. Tuck our crossover down into the dash. Then we're gonna choose the zero dB setup. Plug in our wires. Tuck all those. Tweeters just firmly press in snap into place. Now we can repeat the process on the passenger side. Next, we're going to remove our side panel and our glove box so we can get access to our passenger speaker. Glove box removes just by pushing in the two sides and pull straight out. Next, we're going to remove our two 7mm screws from below the glove box. and one more underneath the dash. Next, we'll just pull the panel out slightly just to give us access to the speaker. Next, we'll remove the 10 millimeter screw seen here on the side of the enclosure. Needs to be accessed from underneath the dash. Then we're gonna remove our two seven millimeter screws from the side of the enclosure. They're gold colored, they're right here and here. Now we can unplug our speaker enclosure and then wiggle it out through our glove box opening. Next, we're gonna replace our six and a half inch speaker. Just wanna point out that we use all the same factory mounting points um, as the original speaker, so we're not making any new holes in our enclosure. Next, we can plug in our new six and a half inch speaker using the factory style plugs. Then we'll install some of our polyfill. Might be hard to tell when you open the box, but there are two sheets of polyfill included with each set of speakers. This polyfill is gonna make the airspace in this little cube seem a little bit larger to the speaker and give you deeper, tighter bass. You just kind of spread it out in there and it'll do its job. And we can drop the speaker back in. Next, we'll reinstall our three factory Phillips screws. Next, we'll snake our pod with our new speaker. 
back in through the glove box hole. Slide it over into place. Typically like to start the 10 mil from underneath that runs right into this fastener here. Just enough to hold it in place. And then I'll put in the seven mil screws on the other side. Then we can snug up our 10 millimeter from underneath. Then we can reconnect our factory plug to the pod. And pop our factory panel back into place. We go ahead and reinstall the seven millimeter screws into this panel. I like to start the screw by hand underneath. And once it threads in, hit it with our gun. We're gonna leave our glove box out because it'll assist with running our subwoofer cable later on. Next, we'll remove two 10 millimeter bolts from the metal panel right underneath of our knee bolster and the two seven millimeter bolts in the plastic panel below it. This metal plate just pulls straight up and unhooks. Then we can remove our side panel with our panel tool, just pops out of place. Then we're gonna temporarily remove our OBD2 plug from our I-509 and remove the seven mil screw just to the left of it. Next, we're gonna remove our 10 millimeter screw right here from underneath again. We're gonna remove the same gold seven millimeter screws from the side of the enclosure, like we did on the passenger side. Next, we're gonna unplug our driver's side pod. A little difficult to get on film with where it's at, but it unplugs the same as the passenger side. It's just tucked up in the back. Then we can snake our driver's side pod out. Now we're going to replace the driver's side speaker in the factory pod. We're going to go ahead and put the other polyfill sheet into this side of the enclosure. We're going to plug this back in using the factory style plug. And pop this back in the pod using our original Phillips head screws. Our new amplifiers actually install behind this speaker, so we're not gonna reinstall it until the final step. Next, we're gonna remove our driver's side soundbar speaker using a T15 Torx bit. I want to take a second to talk about our two different tweeter mounting options 
These change depending on whether you have a 2007 to 2014 Jeep Wrangler or a 2015 to 2018 Jeep Wrangler. If your Wrangler is a 2015 to 2018 Jeep Wrangler, you're just gonna mount the tweeter inside of our adapter panel, and there's actually a factory location for the tweeter in your soundbar. Our Jeep today is a 2014, so the tweeter will actually mount into the center of our grill. The wire will run in a channel along the back of the grill and be covered by a small cover that prevents the wire from contacting the cone of the woofer when everything is put back together. We'll start by popping our tweeter into the center of our grill. We just turn and snap into place. Then we'll pull our tweeter wire into the provided channel. And snap our cover into place. Just like that. Next, we're gonna connect our tweeter wires very similar to what we did in the front. We have a plus three dB and a zero dB selection. Depending on whether you want them a little bit louder or a little bit more subdued, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use the zero dB setup here. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pop our grill onto our speaker being careful not to catch our beard between the grill and the speaker itself. Success. Next, we're gonna plug our tweeter into the speaker using the 2007 to 2014 input plug. Just like that. Now our speaker is ready for reinstall. Before we put our speaker back in, we're gonna go ahead and put the same polyfill into our soundbar. Again, this is gonna make this seem like it's a larger airspace to the speaker and give you deeper, tighter bass. Then we can pop our speaker back up into place, tucking the crossover out of the way. Plug our factory plug back onto the speaker itself. One more note. If you prefer the appearance of the factory grills, they will fit over top of the new speaker setup. However, we like the look of our Alpine grills, so we're gonna leave it this way in this case. Now we're gonna go ahead and repeat the steps on the passenger side rear soundbar speaker. We've already taken the time to assemble the passenger side rear speaker. So we're gonna go ahead and put our polyfill in and reinstall the new speaker. Again, if we chose to, at this point, we could have installed the factory grill back in place, but again, we're gonna just leave the Alpine grills for the more rugged look. Next, we're gonna connect our power harness to the positive terminal of our battery and run it across and into the car. Wanna make one quick note that the negative terminal is still disconnected at this time, so it's safe to connect to the positive. Go ahead and loosen one of the nuts on our power terminal. Next, we're gonna run our power cable along our main harness at the top of the firewall over to the driver's side of the car. 
I like to put a zip tie on either side of the fuse holder just to secure it in place for easy access later. We'll go ahead and add some more zip ties to support this. We'll go ahead and trim off the ends of our zip ties. Next, we're gonna feed our power cable through our factory grommet. Maybe a little difficult to see down there, but it's inside of the silver bracket behind your brake booster. Just below this post, there is a rubber insert that has a cross across it. Should make it easy to identify. You can just push your cable right through there and it'll pop out inside of the car. Next, we're gonna run our main harness. This has the two plugs for our amplifiers, the ground cable, and the positive connection to plug into the cable we just ran from our battery. From underside of the dash, we are going to run the section that goes up to the center of the dashboard up top, our subwoofer plug over to under the passenger seat, and a remote base knob to the location that we're gonna install it for this video, which is into the knee bolster panel for easy access and adjusting base on the fly. Now we're gonna pull the side labeled radio side up to the center of our dashboard. Next, we're going to run the side labeled subwoofer under the dash over to the passenger side under the glove box and then out to under the passenger seat. So there is a small tunnel right behind climate controls right here. That's a very easy pathway to pull this cable over. And we can tuck it under our carpet, ready for us to remove the passenger seat. Next up, we're gonna unbolt our seat using an 18 millimeter socket and drop in our subwoofer. I'm going to go ahead and slide the seat part way back. We're just going to lean the seat back out of the way. So with the seat reclined, you'll see some factory harnesses mounted to a flat plate on the bottom of the passenger side rail. We're going to go ahead and pop those harnesses out using a panel tool. Using our T30 Torx, we're gonna to go ahead and remove two bolts that secure the mounting plate to the bottom of the seat. Next, we're going to zip tie this factory harness to the left side of the seat rail, just to tie it out of the way. Now we can go ahead and place our subwoofer onto the seat, and make our connection.
One of my favorite things about this subwoofer is because it's down firing, it loads all the base into the footwell so that when your top is off, the base stays in the vehicle and does a really, really good job. Drop our seat back into place. Making sure we line the seat subwoofer up under the seat brackets. I like to hand start the bolts. Make sure that they all line up before you snug them down. Now that all four bolts are hand threaded in, go ahead and snug them down. Now that our subwoofer's in, we can go ahead and put our glove box back in, pushing these tabs into place, and put our side panel back on. Now we can make our connections at our radio. We want to differentiate the difference between these two connection styles. This one is used when you're using the factory Jeep radio. Basically gives you plug and play connections with Jeep plugs on the end of it. We're plugging our amplifiers directly in from the harness. Because we have our I-509 WRAJK, we won't be using this plug today. We're gonna set it aside. We will be using our RCA ends. These ends will plug into the three colored cables that have come up to our dash. They're all color coded, so very easy to figure out where they plug in. Then they're labeled front, rear, and subwoofer. So we'll go ahead and plug our front RCA into our front RCA output. Gray to red and white to white. Next, we can do our rear RCAs to our rear RCA output. Purple to red and green to white. And last up, we have our subwoofer, which goes to our subwoofer RCA, of course. White to white, red to red. On the same harness, we have our speaker outputs from our amplifier. They're labeled audio out. They're going to tie in to our factory plug. We're just gonna plug black into black, white into white, and our speaker connections are done. And then last, we have our terminal labeled remote. There's a blue terminal coming off the radio that is labeled Remo, which is short for remote. And we'll go ahead and plug that in. and our connections at the radio are done. Now that our connections at the dash are done, we can go ahead and reinstall some of our dashboard, including our cluster bezel. Next, we can pop our screen back in. I like to just hand thread a couple screws first. Next, we can plug back in our bezel. Being careful around the screen. Go ahead and pop it back on. Last, we 
can plug in our power window switch, which again, just kind of like to turn it to the side so you can access the plug and push back down the locking tab and then it just snaps back into place. So next we'll connect our ground to our factory ground point. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here in the kick panel. And then last, we'll connect our power using our heat shrink tubing to secure the connection. Now we're gonna use our torch to melt our heat shrink tubing. You can also use a heat gun if you don't have a, a butane torch handy. Next, we're gonna make our ground connection, which is on a factory grounding point, which is a 10 millimeter nut right here in the kick panel. Now, before we mount our amplifiers, we're gonna go ahead and remove the cover plates for the controls. Make sure that we have them set the way that it's outlined in the manual for your specific radio. Now that we have our cover panels off, we've matched our amplifier settings to our installation manual. We can go ahead and plug them in, reconnect our negative terminal, and make sure we're happy with our sound settings. We wanna make note that the plugs are labeled KTA30FWRA and KTA30MWRA. Make sure you plug in the right plug to the right amplifier. Now we're gonna go ahead and power up our radio. Make sure we're happy with the way that everything sounds, uh, taking into account the fact that we have not yet mounted our driver's side speaker. Okay, sounds good. We're gonna go ahead and mount up our amplifiers. Now with our cover panels reinstalled, we can go ahead and sneak our amplifiers up into the dash. I find it easier to do this with them unplugged. Our two screws at the top of the bracket go into the factory mounting holes and then one more into a factory mounting hole at the bottom of the bracket. Now we can go ahead and plug our amplifiers back in. Worth noting, the KTA30FW is the amp on the right side. Now that we have our amps mounted and our wires secured and tucked out of the way, being sure to steer clear of the pedals, securely tying them up with zip ties, we're gonna go ahead and sneak our driver's speaker back in. Go ahead and hand start our screws. And with everything hand threaded, we can go ahead and reattach our speaker plug. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our seven millimeter screws onto our dash. This last one I just like to get finger tight first. Now we can reinstall our metal plate with our two 10 millimeter screws. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our side cover. One more thing to note, 
This kit comes with a subwoofer level control, mostly for if you're using it with a factory head unit, so you can adjust bass on the fly. Our restyle head unit has a subwoofer level control built into it, so we're gonna skip that step of the installation and just tuck it away. If you were to install it, you would just need a 930 second drill bit, and you can install it to either the center console or the knee bolster panel, whatever you're comfortable with for a location that's easy for you. The bolster's back on and our install is done. Cool. All right, guys, that wraps up the installation of our PSS 22 WRA weather resistant Jeep JK sound system. If you found this video helpful, please smash that like button, subscribe to Alpine Dash TV. If you have questions, feel free to comment below or you can look me up on Facebook under Alpine Colin. I'm always here to help. Happy Jeeping, guys.